CNBC. Baseball's in big. We begin this hour with an alert in this final hour of trading regarding a settlement now between J.P. Morgan uh, and uh, WorldCom shareholders or investors there. Wall Street Journal now reporting that Morgan has reached a $2 billion settlement uh, with shareholders led by New York State's comptroller Alan Hevesy. An official announcement expected any minute now. A press conference is forming. In fact, there is Comptroller Hevesy uh, going into court moments ago to discuss the settlement with J.P. Morgan uh, regarding that WorldCom case. And, of course, yesterday, uh, the uh, trial of uh, Bernard Ebers in the WorldCom uh, matter ended with guilty uh, verdicts. And there's J.P. Morgan Chase shares down 12 cents right now at $36.15. Welcome, everyone, to The Closing Bell. I'm Tyler Matheson. And I'm Ron Ansana sitting in for Maria Bartiromo. We'll have much more on that story as it develops. Now, also this hour, we're going to have special coverage of the oil markets and the impact on the stock market today. Oil hit a record high, crossing the $56 a barrel mark for the first time ever. And at the end of the day, at settlement, oil ended at its high, up $1.41 to $56.46 as it moves on into after hours action. Now, that new high was hit even as OPEC said at a meeting in Iran it would increase its production by 2%. But tighter than expected, gasoline inventories squeezed prices. Oil surge is one of the factors hurting the broader markets today, but there is money to be made in the oil patch. Right now, BP up 23 cents. We see fractional gains across the board in Chevron, Texaco, Royal Dutch, Exxon Mobil, and Schlumberger among the oil service stocks. As for the general markets right now, the Dow uh, looking very cloudy uh, at uh, 10,627, off uh, better than 1% or 117 points. Uh, as for NASDAQ, off a little less than 1% at 2016 21 uh, as you see an 18 point slide there but it has really been sort of the 1 p.m. Uh, moment uh, is when the market started to turn markedly south and now the S&P 500 1186 96 down almost 11 points nine tenths of one percent our oil coverage continues now with Bob Pisani who has the stock impact from the New York Stock Exchange Paul Sankey a senior oil analyst at Deutsche Bank he's talking about stocks with Kurt Hallied from uh, RBC Capital Markets we will start first however with John Connolly vice president of Advantage Futures he is live at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange and you know John with respect to that uh, late run in oil you're buying at the close was there a news event that prompted it uh, I should say as oil closes at its highs yeah. what's going on there well, the, the key thing, Ron, here is that we hit our highs. The Dow, the S&P, in fact, most of the major indices hit multi-year highs a week and a half ago. And at this point, the key thing that's happening is we have been drifting lower for the last week and a half. Now, we are right near the February lows, which is the first important level here. We are about 15 points away from that in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. If we drop below 10, 6, 11, you're going to hear a lot of technicians talk about breaching important levels. In fact, we've already breached an uptrend in the Dow and the S&P. So there's a lot of technical talk here today, as well as, of course, the GM effect. Ron? All right, now, John Connolly, with respect to oil. And that's a look ahead at where oil futures might be headed. But what about the oil stocks right now? Here to discuss, Kurt Hallett. He covers the oil service sector for RBC Capital Markets and is in New York. Kurt, good to have you. a very large day. For more on the broader market at this hour. And Robert, uh, as you mentioned earlier in the day, there's a possibility that we could have done some technical damage yeah. to the stock market today. Uh, and despite some good economic numbers on the housing front, uh, we, we are getting just that because GM and its earnings warning seem to overshadow all the good news that we got elsewhere. Yeah, and it's not just GM, Ron. In fact, uh, only 30 of the 110 points in the Dow are, res are GM responsible. The rest are the weakness in the broader market and really in the cyclical group overall. This is a very complicated week. We are getting the expiration of options and futures, this quarterly event that occurs. You get some volatility. On top of that, the S&P is reweighting at the end of the week. Week partly and that also is causing some confusion and part of this sell-off may be due to factors associated with those two events this is very difficult to sort out but certainly it makes things complicated take a look at the markets in the last hour John, uh, Ron is right the uh, GM is keeping the Dow underperforming the rest of the market including the major indexes here oil closing at historic highs has certainly been very difficult but a key thing to point out is how weak the cyclicals have been the market leaders have been the cyclicals the transports the steel and the chemicals take a quick look at the 
Chemicals. This is not a terribly sexy group, but they have made a lot of money for a lot of people. They hit multi-year highs just a week and a half ago. Generally, they have been weaker almost every day since then here. So stocks like Dow Chemical and DuPont and Lyondell are all down on stronger volume here today. Let me keep moving on. The Dow, take a look three months in the Dow here. And the key point here is we hit three and a half year highs just about a week and a half ago. We've been drifting downward ever since then. We're right near the lows that we saw in February, as you can see there on the left. And that level there would be 10, 6, 11. Bear that in mind. Let's go over to Maya. She's standing by over at the NASDAQ. Well, thanks much, Bob. Let me point something out here. It's a tale of crude here at the NASDAQ. You can see here that uh, the NASDAQ actually shrugged off that news about GM. And then as soon as we saw the crude prices start to head up to those record levels, the NASDAQ actually dropped, dropped, dropped. And uh, it has stayed at a pretty much consistently low level of around 16 uh, points off for much of the day. But some stocks are getting a lot of attention down here, despite the fact that they are actually bucking the trend. One of them, we've been talking about this a lot today, RIM, Research in Motion. You can take a look at Research in Motion here. They actually have been up. They're up about 19% right now. They continue to climb because the makers of the BlackBerry have settled a patent dispute with NTP Technologies that was uh, agreeing to pay them $450 million. This dispute has been hanging over RIM's head. Now it's gone. Investors are glad. It's always good to get a potential liability cleared up and actually get a price tag on it and that's what we've seen today. Meanwhile, more twists and turns to the MCI saga. There is back and forth between the CEOs of Verizon and Quest today following word from CNBC's David Faber just this morning that Quest will make a new bid for MCI. You're seeing that um, Qu uh, Verizon CEO actually disparaged Quest's claims for the merger, saying it doesn't pass a common sense test. And then Quest CEO firing back, saying his company will demonstrate its commitment to winning MCI over the next 24 hours. MCI actually down today about 1%. So quite a bit going on here at the NASDAQ. Back over to you, Tyler. Maya Kalicki reporting. Let's check now on the stocks that are moving in this final hour of the trading day, and they're mostly moving lower. Biogen, IDEC, top of the list, and Joe Kern's got the story. Joe? Well, it's been very volatile, uh, volatile trading in this stock today, uh, Tyler, and it has moved into the top 10 on the NASDAQ. 25, uh, 26 million shares have now changed hands. Check out this intraday chart. Uh, you know, it was February 28th. When the Hogan Chief Market Analyst at Jefferies and Company. Now, Art, you we have some, you know, General Motors has pointed out. Company in Boston. Now, we're going to have more on GM and the rest of the auto sector just about 20 minutes from now. For up to the minute market dispatches, by the way, including analysis and commentary, log on to CNBC.com on MSN. 41 minutes to go, and uh, it can't come too soon if you're long the Dow today, off 114 points. NASDAQ off 19. Lots of big stock stories ahead. And a rim relief rally all day today. We'll hear from one analyst who says the Crackberry maker is worth $120 a share, or you can call it the Blackberry if you like. We'll find out when Microsoft will come after rim. GM has been driving the Dow down all day long, so what about the foreign car makers? Should you go overseas for your auto stocks? That's all ahead, but first, the most active stocks of the New York Stock Exchange led today down by General Motors. Taking